Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Muskegon. I'm Chauncey Williams. And I'm Tony Williams. And this is What Do I Do Now? Your guide to credit debt and planning for your financial success with 103.7 The Beat. All righty. Let's, uh, let's get into the swing of things today, as we normally do. We like to start out with a little sports talk. Oh, yes. Uh, we saw the, the sports talk. I'm I'm digging uh, Russell Westbrook. I'm digging him, what he's, what he's done, the 42 triple-doubles. And Tolliver, that plays for Sacramento Kings, I remember writing something on Facebook, and he's he commented on it. And I was like, Russell Westbrook is Michael Jordan, 1988. Okay. And he was like, that's absurd. No. no. I was like, before Scottie Pippen, he is. Okay. I said, without Kevin Durant, you're going to find out this season how good he really is. Oh, yeah. And I've, I don't I don't try to inbox the guy that played for Sacramento Kings. I don't wrote him. He okay. has not responded. Well, you don't think I don't think he's going to. <laughs> yeah, he's, I think. But at first he was responding, coming. He said you try, you gave him a lot of credit. I was uh-huh. like, man, I see it in his game that he's gonna break some type of record this year. Yeah, he is a man on a mission. Man on a mission. But then my thing is Tony looking at it from a, um, a marketing scheme, money scheme, and just seeing the athlete, you know, being able to use their athletic prowess for the economy. Mm-hmm. For the economy machine, I know he wears Jordan. He wears Jordan. He wears okay. Air Jordans, but it's like this season has happened, and he's been in the MVP race, but it's not really honored. Mm-mm. It's no. like Michael Jordan is a measuring stick, and you cannot exceed that. I mean, LeBron's yeah. doing his thing. Yeah. Well, the, t- the problem is with Mike, man. It's it's the rings. Okay, that's what the league look at. When they when they try to measure this MVP thing, MVP is the rings, the amount of rings. I don't think it's fair. Oscar Robertson, the other morning, was on Mike and Mike. Yes, and he spoke about what it took back in the day to, to average a triple double like he did. Okay, break that down. All righty, and his thing was the athletes of today are so much better than they were in his era. That's right. Okay, different style of basketball. But he said, I'm telling you, I watch basketball. He says, and I don't go to the game to watch the score. I go to the game and I watch players. I watch how they manage the game. I watch how they manage their game. And he said, Russell Westbrook is one of the best. Okay? And when he got finished, they asked him about MVP. And, you know, there's still some doubt about who it's going to be. But he said, clearly, there is no doubt in my mind, based on his performance this year, he deserves to be the MVP. MVP, because nobody else is going to do what he did. He said, that record probably will never be broken. No, it won't. Because, I mean, Russell Rushbrook is the same height as Oscar Robert, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but he jumped a whole foot higher than him. Okay. And his game is, and he's a lot more faster. Okay. And I don't, you know, I know the big oak could probably dunk. but if Not like to, that. But if you... Uh, had to add up the number of dunks the big O had versus what he got. It's it's it's, it's huge, man. man it's a big difference. Do, that guy that guy's amazing and just <clears throat> it's just and then plus another thing for him is he's Oklahoma is known for oil and diamonds and all this and for this you know Natural for the, resources, yeah. minerals. Yeah. They, they rich. People in that area. That's the old oh, yeah. you know they're that's the, the old Wall Street. There you go. I was Black thinking, Wall Street. That's the old Black Wall Street where they at right now. Okay. So everybody looking at Oh, Oklahoma, why they got an NBA team? They, that city's so small. It's like Grand Rapids. Yeah, very small market. Very it's small very market. small market. Only thing they got is the Oklahoma Thunder. They don't have yeah. nothing else. They don't no have a football, football team. team. <laughs> nothing. No nope. baseball team. Nope. They just got the Oklahoma Thunder. But it's right in the old spot where the Black Wall Street was at. Okay. So why is it still rich? They say some of the richest people in the world live, in, in America, live in Oklahoma okay. Thunder's community. I believe it. I believe it. Man, it's just like, it's like it make you think. But they're just looking at athletes like, you got Tony Romo being honored at a Dallas Mavericks game, letting him warm up and all oh, this. Oh, yeah, had him on the bench. It was yeah. going to put him in the game till they realized that that is a violation of the rules in the NBA. It was going to put him in the game. Yes. Yes, watch the clip. He had gotten off the bench. Mark Cuban came and got him. Mark Cuban said, no, no, no. Because the fans out there, they cheering. Okay, you know, they got beat. They was getting beat. They weren't going to win. And – uh the, ch- the fans are chanting for the guy, right? So he gets up off the bench, and uh, the coach, um, the old uh, Rick Carlisle, Indiana Pacers, yeah, old Indiana Pacers, he was standing next to him, and 
Mark Cuban said, I'm not ready to pay this fine because there would have been a huge fine because he's not under contract. That's going to put him in. He's going to put him in because of the, the crowd. Wow, the fan okay? fair. Yeah, the that's fans crazy. In, I've in never Dallas. seen nobody ever do that. No, I don't think that's ever happened, man. But, uh, yeah. and All course, this stuff a joke. That's what it is now, this whole thing. Yeah, um, and Cuban, after the game, made a remark about the Dallas Cowboys not giving him an opportunity to to leave the game in a gracious manner. Um, you know, and, and a lot of players have finished their careers, had an opportunity to play their last game, you know, leave the field to a standing ovation, all this stuff. What he's done, though. He won two playoff games. Totally, totally. Scott and Mitchell. Yeah, <laughs> and, I think, and I think based Scott on the Mitchell amount of money the he made, it, it equated to like $23 million per playoff that he, he amassed. But at the end of the day, Jimmy Jones, Jimmy um, Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, was a big supporter. But when he realized how Dak Prescott raised the level of that team, which also said that increased the marketing dollars, as a businessman, he had to take a look at Romo and say, "Well, it's been nice knowing you, but based on where this team is today, you, you know, you're either going to sit the bench or you're going to go because really there's nothing that we can market you to." All right, other teams don't really want to take a chance. But if if they if he had found somewhere to go, the Dallas was willing to let him go. There was teams that just didn't want the guy, man. So what, so what does that say? Okay, you've had neck surgeries, back surgeries, really never played a complete career. And what I got Parcell say when he was with the Dallas uh, group? Oh, he said uh, he averaged. I can't pay him no more than what y'all what I've been giving him. He was general okay. manager. Right. He was cutting the salary, he's cutting the check, and Jerry Jones said, I want to make him a franchise tag. He was like, oh, I'm out of here. I quit then. Right. If you're going to make that kind of move, man, you're going to detriment to the team. Then the tuna was like, the tuna said, there's no more room for coaches like me no more in the NFL. Nope. That's when he stepped away. <laughs> and he, he ain't look back. And then look what they just did for him. They put him in a spot where he has a seat with CBS or somebody now, where he's commentating over games. Yeah, yeah, that's been a controversy because they removed uh, Phil Simms. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to take Phil Simms' spot. But there are uh, many kids that's in college that's fighting to get into the career of uh, journalism. broadcasting. Yeah, journalism. They, they pay their, their dues, and they, they take a guy like him who they think is a fan favorite and will make an immediate impact on their show. Um, that yet remains to be seen. But, yeah, he's, he's no, got really been entitled. He's been entitled. And what has he accomplished? You got a ring? No, he don't have a ring. He just sitting up there on TV. <laughs> He's just getting not paid, like no man. Ray Lewis or nobody or like a Shannon Sharp. Or, you know, it's where you right. like this this brother the one. He the, he's tough. He's gonna have an angle. He's gonna come at you. Like, what angle he gonna have? Like you know, these two playoff games I played in. That's it. Can you can we can you <laughs> talk to your Super Bowl experience? Yeah. You know, like Sharp like? Sharp get up there like I was tight end. <laughs> these right. two Super Bowls. Ray Lewis. I, you know I played with John Elway. You know. Yeah. Ray Lewis so, is like I was the offense and defense. Yes. You know, I yeah. anchored that. I, I commanded everybody and his super, two Super Bowls, his MVPs, yeah. Jerome Bettis. You know, it's just. Oh, yeah. So right. it's like you you in that crowd among those guys, you have no jury. No, no jury. No, no street cred. <laughs> Man, that's that's something wrong with that to me. That's politically like. Oh, absolutely. Yes, it is. And, you know, these guys, I looked at a, a clip the other day where they, they named all the, the broadcasters, like your, your major news anchors. They make ridiculous amount of money. Oh, yeah. I was just amazed. They getting paid good. The number one highest paid, Judge Judy. Oh, yeah. They, she 43 can't. mil a year. <laughs> $43 million to play that 30-minute 30 segment, 30 minute segment a day. We got to open up Judge Pippen's office then. Okay. We got to get Judge <laughs> Pippen's show going. I know that's right. <laughs> the family court. <laughs> They bring in that kind of jack. In the pit. Yeah. <laughs> in the pit. <laughs> That'll do a lot of e-commerce for our community. Yes, it would. We probably had to take his show, take his show, then <laughs> telecast it. <laughs> Judge probably like, yeah, I'm going to talk to you, John. <laughs> Incredible, man. But for Incredible. Three, 3 million, I think we can get about, five, about 10, 15 okay. for Judge. Yeah, that's just one year, though. Yes. You know, we, we ain't got to get it all. We are a financial show. We got to figure out how to make our community better at the same capacity. That's it. I, I, our judge is good. He done helped a lot oh, of yeah. families out. He, he has a lot yes, of great yeah. knowledge. 
and yes, it rubs well around. And he's uh, a Spartan too, so I, I give him, I give him that. So he nice. got all that stuff going for him, man. <laughs> yeah, so we so, need to make sure he gets his own show. That's right, man. So. Yeah. Speaking of athletes, that's what we had uh, this week at Financials. Yeah, Financials. yeah. We, we thought we would um, take a little detour and talk about, you know, we, we, we talk about uh, the working class people trying to acquire wealth and improve their credit and, and improve their financial standings. But uh, we all like entertainment. That's right. And when we watch entertainers, we know they're a highly paid people. And they normally surround themselves with, with people to help manage them and their monies to make sure that they don't go broke. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Okay. And we're just going to touch on a few of the uh, cases that are probably uh, more known than others. But then on the flip side, we also have success stories about athletes in America. And I think the one at the top of the list athlete that um, squandered millions of dollars has to be Mike Tyson. That's because of his illiteracy. He couldn't read. He trusted yeah. too many he trusted too many people. Well, yeah. I'll go ahead. I, I got a story about him too, but I want you to um share the notes that we have on him today. Okay. I, I want the audience just for themselves, just take a guess at what he earned over his career. Okay, because mm-hmm. we know he was the youngest heavyweight champion. Um uh, First 19 fights, professional fights, were all by knockouts in the first round. And, uh, you know, he, he he was just on his way to stardom and greatness. Do you know Mike Tyson was fighting grown men at 14? They was training him with grown men at 14. <laughs> I can't believe it. Boy, he was <laughs> knocking folks out. I think he, he lost, a, I think he lost um, a quarter of a billion dollars. That's what I think. Quarter of a billion dollars. Yeah, 250 million. Okay. That's, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. Not quite enough. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. According to the New York Times, he earned more than four hundred million dollars in his boxing career. Four hundred million dollars. That is a lot of money, okay? And unfortunately, in two thousand and three, he filed bankruptcy. You know, there was a lot of bad, bad decisions. And then, you know, the and the media also showed him buying tigers and buying, yeah. you know, homes. Birds, and, pigeons. Uh, yeah, entourage and Doves. cars and mansions and wives. Okay. And, yeah, he, as it says here, that um, pet tigers, luxury cars, uh, one divorce, he lost $9 million And, uh, you know, he, had, he owed the IRS, which we, in this day and age, there's no reason that athletes should be in trouble with the IRS if they could, they got good managers behind them. But, yeah, I think he is the, the number one guy at the top of the list when we look at this, the talk about fi- a financial disaster story. Yeah. And then it's just, it's just the problem of um, being so young, when you're an athlete, the money is always front-loaded. Yeah. From your 20s to your early 30s. That's your career. It's like 12 years. As a boxer. If you max out. Especially for boxing, you max out ten years in boxing. You that's great. That's great. Yeah, for your career <clears throat> ten years. That's worse than football being hit. Oh yeah, so, average average uh, football year, career is like three point five. Yeah, you talking about thirty to forty fights over a ten to fifteen year period, ten year period. That's a lot of blows to the head. That's a lot of blows, man. <clears throat> so when you look at that, it's like all that money he made. But I had a funny story about Mike Tyson. Like I said, they say he had him fighting guys when he was fourteen. His mentor. The old man that he Gus had. Gus Diamati. Gus Diamati. When he was alive, everything was good. Right. The money was managed right. Yeah. Everything was right. He, yeah. he, he, Mike, Mike, everything was right. Yeah, because he trusted him, you know. And, and Gus did. And Gus had a genuine interest to make sure that he was successful. When Gus died, some of the other handlers tried to step in, like um, Don King and all those other guys. I remember one yeah. time they talked about Don, Don King asking to sign a blank sheet of paper. Right. <laughs> that's, that's how Don did it. Yeah, he said, like, sign this, just sign this, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'll fill in the blanks. That was a mess, man. man. So just like taking that brother for a ride. and Oh, he stole millions from him. You know, that's how Don King operated. Because you know, he had Ali, he had uh, Foreman, he had a lot of the major fighters yep. under contract. Yep, he and, had some of their fights, you're right. stole a lot of money. Stole yes, a did. lot of money. And he was talk- I remember Mike Tyson was saying that um, he was getting ready to fight the guy that beat Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali was older, he beat him to a pulp. Um, ah. Can't remember the guy's name. 
If it wasn't Larry Holmes. Yes, it was. Oh, it was Larry Holmes. Holmes. Okay, right? yeah. Yeah, so, Larry so Holmes. So he, he can ready to fight Larry Holmes, right? Okay. Mike Tyson, he only like 16, 16 to 15 at the time. Oh, really? Okay. So he said, I'm 16 to 15, and my trainer, they trained me like I'm going to fight Larry Holmes. <laughs> he said, so one day I go to a dance. He said, I got a tuxedo on, like a prom or something. And he said, I'm upstate New York, and I'm in the, I'm in the hood in New York. Okay. So he said, you know, he said he's like about a five-mile radius. He said, well, my trainer called me. My mentor called me. The old man called him. He said, oh, hey, Gus. what you doing? He said, I'm, I just got done getting from this dance. What? We're supposed to be training at 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> you got to beat Larry Holmes. You better get your butt here. <laughs> he was like, what? So he said, so I ran in my tuxedo with my shoes on five miles. Oh, I can believe it. Got on back to the crib. <laughs> got back to train. So that man knew how to motivate him, and he trusted mm-hmm. him with all his money and his livelihood. But when he died, it's just everything. Went the vultures nothing. came in and, uh, you know, just took over. And he made bad decisions as well. You know, they've all been chronicled about the, uh, you know, the old fate of wives, um, going to prison, you know, all that stuff hurt him, man. Um, we, you know, there's many, many that we could go through, but we're just going to hit a couple of them. The ones that uh, kind of stand out, like a Michael Vick. Okay. Um, Michael Vick during his career, was the highest paid player in the NFL. He signed a contract extension of $130 million, which made him the highest paid player in the NFL. And we all know the story of what happened after that. Uh, along, you know, How many had, years in when he was in that before he got caught up? Two years? Um, he signed a six-year contract when he first came into the league with Philadelphia, and that was at 62. And then Three years later, okay, he was with them for three years. Three years later, they signed him to a 10-year extension. With Atlanta, yeah, that was Atlanta. No, he didn't go to Atlanta until... Um, it was Atlanta first, then he was at Philadelphia. Right. Yep. Yep. So, um, $130 million is what he got paid. Then they aged him out. They, you know, they sent him to jail. They aged him out. And aged when, he, out, when, he, when he came back, he still was fast and good, though. Yeah, he played for some teams. He played he was, for Philly. He man, he was Philly. good for Philly. That comeback yeah. game, so... It that was, was just 2007. like 2007. Yeah. Yeah, he lost two years doing time, uh, which also means he lost his lucrative Nike sponsorship. Um, his contract. With, yeah, so he pieces. was forced to declare bankruptcy too. Yeah. And then he said, but Mike, one thing I want to commend Mike Vick about is <clears throat> he went to bankruptcy and said, I'm going to pay everybody back. Yeah. Tony Dungy. Right. Dungy. Tony Dungy was his mentor. I like Tony Dungy. Big Christian um guy mm-hmm. that coached the um, Colts. Yep, Tony Dungy ment- mentored him through the whole process, and he paid everybody back. Mm-hmm. That's the story I got. Yep, he paid he everybody paid. back. M- amazing. It is. Don't know what it happened. Okay, but uh, the guy down in uh, Atlanta really had a genuine interest. Well, both owners did. Philadelphia and Atlanta, it was both, both those guys really uh, liked Michael Vick, and those were the ones that really gave him a second chance at life, which was good. So, but I don't know if he's going to play any more this this year or not. I forgot what the last team he was with. Oh man! No, he tried. Nobody picked him up. I think there was a couple other teams, but it's done. We might have about thirty four yeah. now. So, well, I, I got a good friend, John King. He'll text me and let me know because uh, he had sent me a text last week when we was talking about Marcus Dupree, where he was from. Yes, I think he told me he was from Philadelphia. And I forgot. I said I was going to make sure we got that right. But anyway, we're going to keep going. I'll get to that. Uh, Kenny Anderson. Ah, oh, Tibbs. That's Kenny my Anderson. favorite player of all. Look, that's my favorite basketball player of all time. Really? Left-handed guy from Georgia Tech. Yeah. Number two draft pick behind Larry Johnson. Man, out of Queens. Out of um, Queens. I don't mean out of New York. Uh, Lower Bishop Marion High School. I remember. I know everything about him. I met him personally. And he told me this. I'm going to tell you what Kenny Anderson told me. I met him at a clinic. It's amazing how you meet people. And I was talking to him, and he asked me, he said, man, what's, what's going on in your life? He asked me this. I was like, I'm A, B, and C. And at the time, I was, I used to, um, I used to drink at the time. I used to drink alcohol. And he said, man, look, he said, I don't know about you, but he said, that messed my whole life up. Oh, yeah, he, he said, did. alcohol and women, and women killed his whole career. And he got a movie out right now that he was molested. Really? So all those issues came back when he got the money. Okay. He never really voiced what happened to him as a kid. But it was yeah. like, it came back. His name is, they called him Chibs. It was his nickname. Man, some of the best handles I've ever seen in my life. 
Yeah, well, Kenny can handle the rock. Give me man. the story about my brother, man. Yeah, man, Kenny. Uh, Kenny played for nine different teams in the NBA, and you know that's not good when you that's play not good. For nine different teams. Uh, he earned over sixty million, uh, which is not a, you know, for us it's a lot of money, yeah. but in the league, you know, it's not it's not a huge. Especially amount. when you got child support and alimony. And he had them because he got married three times, <laughs> <laughs> and divorced them all. He had a prenup. Okay. okay, he had a prenup in the first one. She challenged it. Oh. She walked away with half of everything plus $8,500 a month in child support. Man. Okay. And they say she got her some, a vanity plate that's, that read his his cash, okay, on a ride. And then, he, you know, he got married oh, twice, Kenny. twice more and basically lost everything, man. Because he said that he had a, a monthly allowance that he would give himself of ten grand a month, and he referred to it as hanging out money. Okay, and again, he filed for bankruptcy too. Man, that's my favorite. See, that's why kids don't look up to these guys. <laughs> I met him personally, face to face, and I model almost. I love this game because he was left handed. He had a spin move through the legs, the quickness, okay. and just the the flair how he walked on the court. He had that, but that was he said that was his escape. Getting on the floor. Yep, he yeah. said. But then I started thinking like my escape was God and, and finding Christ. He found the court. But then when that, that court faded, he had he had that ten thousand dollar allowance. He should be getting that to a church or something, that ten thousand. No, they, that was his uh hanging out money. That was could have been a tie. It could have been a ten thousand dollar tie. Because he's making a, what, if you're making what, a hundred thousand? Yeah. Ten thousand in ties. Yeah. You could have got it to a church or to a non profit and been happy with the hanging out money of coaching some kids or something. Right. Or going on a vacation with your wife. Ten thousand a month, baby. Just, we can do whatever you want. Just blew it. I would rather blow that with my wife. Like, look, we got ten thousand. Let's go Let's somewhere. Have some fun, right? Yeah, my wife like, no, we ain't finna spend no ten thousand a month. We finna <laughs> nah, do. You broke. Yeah, we finna <laughs> we finna do. We finna spend a thousand if we got it like that and have some fun going on a trip. <laughs> but that's that's one of my favorite players of all time, and it's, it just hurts, man. I know his whole story. This guy here probably might be one of your favorites too, Latrell Sprewell. Oh, the choke artist. <laughs> <laughs> the spinners. The true. The they had the greatest the greatest thing. He had the spinning wheels. He created. Uh-huh. Then the Dada sneakers came out with the spinning rim on them. Right. That was the trail. Your, man. your shoe can walk in the rim and spin on your shoes. <laughs> you know where he's from? He's from Flint. The trail from Flint? Yep. He never said anything in the article about him being from Flint. <coughs> from Flint. He's from Flint. Okay. Well, he made over $100 million And he received a 68-game suspension. Yep. Choking, choking the coach. P.J. Carlos. Seton Hall against 68. Michigan. You remember that coach? Yep. Oh, yeah. Seton Hall against Michigan. Great game. That was uh, the Rice. Uh, boy, Rice was in that uh, yeah. in that game. He choked out on PJ. Yep. And there was an interesting uh, side note here where it said that Minnesota offered him a three-year oh, contract extension for thirty million. What did he tell him? <laughs> you got the quote in there. And he said, uh, <laughs> uh, "He said that's not enough money. I got a family to feed. I can't feed my kids off of that. I can't feed my kids <laughs> off of that." Thirty million. And he said that uh, his kids would be on a commercial with Sally Struthers. Okay, Sally Struthers was the uh, Child Fund International commercials. The old girl used to play on uh, uh, the show with uh, the Jeffersons, was opposite of the Jeffersons. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So uh, after that, they basically took the offer off the table, never gave him a cent, and he never played basketball again. Mm-hmm. Um, had a yacht called Milwaukee's Best. Yeah. That's where he's from, Milwaukee. That's it. Milwaukee. Yeah, from yeah. Milwaukee. And, but uh, he did own a he owned a GM plant in Flint. Really? Yep, he owned a GM plant. That's what he did. Okay. That's how you think he got into the rims and the cars? I don't know. He yep. doesn't, doesn't speak to that, but I know he filed for bankruptcy. <sighs> okay, Lawrence Taylor. We all know about Lawrence Taylor. One of the greatest defensive players in the in the history of football. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, he filed bankruptcy too. 1998. Um, illustrious career. Great guy. Johnny Unitas. Great foot, football player. Quarterback. Quarterback, he filed bankruptcy. Uh, Marion Jones, Mar- Marion Jones, Track the athlete, Olympics, sprinter. steroids, she North Carolina basketball player. Yep, she lied. Yeah, it cost her millions Perjury. of dollars. Yeah, yeah, about um, steroid use. Yeah, it was so bad for her. She had bought her mom a home. She even had to sell her mom's house. Ah, uh, Les Brown. She had to do Les Brown. Yeah, mom was homeless. Okay, uh, Derek Coleman. Ah. Uh, Right, he's still in Detroit Coleman. doing his thing, though. Well, I've seen him. I've seen him one day, and it's been, I don't know, probably 
eight years, or whatever, and it was. I seen him too. Night and he was hanging out in front of a club. He went to my wife' high school. Oh, he did. Northern. But go ahead. You seen him hanging out in front of a club? Yeah, uh, he had eighty-seven million. He played in league 15, 15 years. Uh, he filed bankruptcy in March of uh, two thousand ten. Um, and it just—it's ridiculous the kind of things he got. So lazy guys. when he signed his contract. Oh yeah, Derrick Cole was oh, yeah. ridiculous when yeah. he signed his deal. His eighty-four million. <laughs> Him and Larry Johnson, they fell off the planet. They was like, I got the money, I'm good, I ain't got to hoop no more. Mm-mm. No, they would, they would just phone in their game. <laughs> they wouldn't even show up for the, for the game. I just gotta they get would to... come up missing. They yeah. wouldn't even show up sometimes. Yeah. $87 million. And they said he even owned, he owed Dave Bing money. Man. <laughs> he had borrowed money from Dave Bing. Owed him money. Scotty Pittman. Yep, Scotty Pittman. Scotty Pittman filed bankruptcy. Okay. Another illustrious career. Over $120 million. And he filed bankruptcy. Antoine Walker. Okay. $110 million. He filed bankruptcy. And baseball player Tony Gwynn. Um, again, he, he filed bankruptcy uh, as well. So, uh, short list, actually. Short list of uh, players that... Really didn't do well after yeah. their careers. Were it's over. like we bashing everybody, you know. Yeah, you know, we gotta have some success. I got, I got this. one, I got one. Okay, I, but I was like, man, he took my favorite player and we bashed him. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's an athlete. I looked at him as an athlete, not as a model for my finances. I tell you okay. that. Okay. But when I asked him those questions, when I got a chance to meet him, I was just so excited. I felt like a little kid again. But it's just like it hurt to see somebody because he left college early. You mm-hmm. know, went to the um, Final Four. The shot with Steve Smith and them on the backboard or something like that, and they counted it. You know, okay. I remember that. <clears throat> but uh, I got Kevin Durant, and he talks about his childhood, his investments, and his real life's work. And Kevin Durant, this article talks about him making <clears throat> $36 million this year off the basketball court. With his off investment. the basketball court. Yes, $36 million off the court with his Durant company, uh, his startups, his Postmates, his Jet, Jet Smarter. And also investing in acorns.com. I use acorns.com yes. with the, the roundup of my chains. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe I saved like $1,000 this year. And I I don't even check it all the time. I just look out like that's 1000 right. bucks. Like, that's amazing. Right. That's not walking around money for a year. Yeah. 1000 so, bucks. Yep. So it's just like, but I don't have like no 10000 a month. <laughs> a thousand is amazing to have a spare change. And you don't even realize it. Right. When you pay bills and stuff like that. Uh, so just looking at Kevin Durant, they asked him a series of questions. And I'm going to go through some of those questions. So if you talked a lot about the sacrifices your mom made for you and your brother growing up, how has that influenced your approach to life and your career? Well, his response was hard work, plan, and simple. Plain and simple. It was clear to me at a young age that if you didn't get up every day and work hard when it was dark, you weren't eating. Mm. So working hard and never cutting corners wasn't an easy question for me because we were starving. So he had no choice. He said, I'll never forget seeing my mom before the sun came up, leaving the house on a few hours of sleep over and over and over again. That's what these athletes need to remember. Okay. Somebody sacrificed. Don't forget where you come from. Chad Johnson said that. He said, Chad Johnson said, I've been broke since 1978. <laughs> and we talked about him saying he went yeah. by all this jewelry from Claire. Yeah. He said, I'm going to keep on stunting like the dude in the hood do. Like when I ride around in certain places, I see guys with necklaces and chains on. I know they fake. Right. They just put their front up. <laughs> <laughs> the fake diamonds and everything. That's what they doing. But- you see stuff, somebody paid this much money and did all this. Don't be caught up in it. Right. Don't be caught up in it. It's not worth it. The second question they asked him was, how they watching your mom struggle to support you both while you were working, while she was working two jobs, affect your own relationship with money? Oh, okay. Listen to his response here. To this day, I still can't believe the luxuries this game has afforded me. It's almost embarrassing at times, but I understand it's the market for my profession. I appreciate every moment and how lucky I am. Knowing how just a short time ago I had nothing has really been the leading motivation for me to have the right people work with me and help me manage my money. I want my kids and their kids to benefit from the time in my life and not ever have to go through what I went through. All right. I'm, yes, right. I'm also very driven to be a, um, someone that gives back, a, a philanthropist, mm-hmm. so, I can, um, so I can be. I don't think I could enjoy my success without knowing I was doing all I could to help others. That's what Kenny Anderson missed out with that ten thousand a month, right. that me money. 
that ten thousand a month could have been an AAU team. It could have went to somebody ministry, somebody church. And all Homeless you had to do was show up, shelter. And, and, and all you had yeah. to do was show up and wave your hand and be around them people. That's like partying. Yeah, that's the change in my partying. I mean, I don't have millions of dollars. I don't have. I'm not giving ten thousand dollars a month away. But when you show up to organizations and you doing things, you doing your part. And then they say they're going to have a celebration. They're going to go on this trip. And you get the chance to go and be with those entities. That's your way of giving back your gift. Mm -hmm. That 10000 could have died a lot, man. man. Oh, man. I mean, it's Every okay month. to celebrate. It's okay to celebrate. You can have yeah. some fun. I know you grown folks, grown folks, but... Come on, man. You can't do that every month. No. You having a Christmas every month? Oh, birthday every month? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it's your birthday. Come on. So here's the next question. Listen. It says, what's the best financial decision you've made so far and why? This is Kevin Durant. Having the right round of people around me and trusting my instincts and asking questions. You can't learn and grow without leaning on others. Very true. Next question. What's the biggest financial lesson you've learned? And this is what he's, Kevin Andoran said. Nothing is a can't miss way to make money. Mm. There's always a catch. Do your homework before investing or supporting a business or an idea and save. And save. Always keep building your savings because nothing in life is guaranteed. Okay. He dropping some heavy hitters. Yeah. Ask more questions and trust yourself, just as I said before. But young Kevin had to learn those lessons for me to be who I am today and to be surrounded by people that I am with today. And that's the reason why he ain't Golden State. You okay. don't got nothing to do with no championships. No. He's seen the opportunity to go get all that money right quick. That's right. And he said, I'm investing this. My kids' kids going to eat off of this. Yeah, it's a legacy. So I get one ring or one, one, one ring one day. Right. But if I, can, if I got this plan set up where I can get all of this while I'm young, I get a ring one day. Get a ring. I don't. Scotty Skiffin got six rings. Six. And he broke. And he broke. Hey, I'm going to the Golden State Warriors <laughs> too. <laughs> if I got a plan about these millions, with these millions, I, I got 35 million. I don't got to live off my NBA contract. Oh, I'm living. Oh, yeah. You don't even need to live off that, actually. Only a yeah. portion of that. He's still riding them old school vans okay. and living in a condo. So he know what he's doing. He don't need matches. His mama's still living in Oklahoma. Right. Yeah. She, she still show up at the games. Yeah. She still show up at Westbrook games. Yeah. Yeah, she so, knew she's an Oklahoma yep. fan, but she knew that was a business decision. It That's wasn't right. personal. No, he still loved Oklahoma City, yeah. man. This and it's cheap to live there. Yeah. He got it. He got a condo. He there. He'll never get rid of he it. He still got the condo there. <laughs> He'll probably he go back. <laughs> yeah. It says, "What do you hope to accomplish through your namesake charity foundation?" Look how they word that question. Your namesake charity, charity namesake yep. to help as many underserved communities and children, especially through education, athletics, and opportunity. It's my real life's work. And then you notice that when an NBA player gets fined, their money has to go to a charity. Right. So they make namesake charities, and they give it to their own organization that they want to. Right. That's, that's good. That's good. And I like the NBA for doing that. Uh, last question for the day. You own a stake in the Players' Tribune, the Tiger Beat, Postmates, and Acorns. What do you look for in the investments you pursue? pursue? He said, Things I connect to and I believe in and great executive teams. The people I'm investing in is really the first indicator of whether it's something I want to be a part of. So hold up. He didn't say the product. He said the people and the relationships that he had. Once he could see through those, that's what it's worth an investment. That's a brother that's making $35 million outside of his NBA contract. Off if we the know. court. Off, Off the, the court. court. Because of his character. Okay. Yeah. It's not about yeah. His basketball skills do come to, come into play, but for the most part, the sponsors want to know about your character. Nowadays, the worst thing you can do is go out there and embarrass them. That's right. The Ron okay. Artest is of the world. Right. Indiana Ron was the best Ron Artest until okay. he jumped in the stands. After Larry, Indiana Ron was averaging twenty seven points a game. Larry Bird was all the way behind him with the money. Fan favorite. <sighs> At yeah. the fool, he lost all that. Lost all of it. Lost all of it. Okay. And then we talk about success stories and. Of course, you know, we have to talk about Magic Johnson. Oh, man, he's one of the best. Barton, okay. he's one of the best. We're talking about him today. Great success story. We're trying to bring him to the Muskegon. Okay, so, it's gonna take uh, again, a lot. you know, we, we want to show the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, but at the end of the day, it's up to each one of us as individuals, parents, to make sure that our kids learn how to make the right decisions in life when it comes to not only their personal growth, but their financial growth and their spiritual growth. All right, on that note, I'm Chauncey Williams. And I'm Tony Williams. And this is What Do I Do Now? Your guide to credit, debt, and planning for your financial success with 103.7 The Beat.